for a two-yard touchdown in heavy snow with 57 seconds left and the Cleveland Browns stunned division rival Pittsburgh 24-19 on Thursday night, ending the Steelers' five-game win streak. The Steelers was one last chance, but quarterback Russell Wilson's Hail Mary on the final play was knocked down by Brown safety Grant Delton in the end zone. Here's George Pickens on the L. Just keep grinding. Uh, like I said, conditions played a huge, huge part in today's game. Uh, I don't really think the Cleveland Browns are a great, good team at all. I think the conditions kind of saved them today. Well, there's that. ESPN Browns reporter Daniel Oyafusi shared this from the Cleveland Browns locker room. Overheard in the Browns post-game locker room, he faked tough. He wasn't even going for the ball. Mm. Mm-hmm. Stephen A. Mm-hmm. Uh, did the Steelers have a George Pickens problem? Not a George Pickens problem. I mean, I think that he was wrong to say what he was going to say, what he said, actually. Uh, the fact of the matter is, it's football. This man played. He's a Super Bowl champion. Cam Newton played. League MVP. They know a hell of a lot better than me. But it doesn't take much to recognize the fact that this is the National Football League. Yeah. Okay? You're a Pittsburgh Steeler. I've never heard a Pittsburgh Steeler in my life complain about inclement weather. <laughs> I've never heard it. I mean, we, we've seen them play under the, most yeah. of ad, uh, under the most adverse conditions throughout history. Now, if you are a member of the Chargers, meaning that when you were playing in San Diego or you wanted the L.A. teams or you were a Miami team, it makes sense. But to me, him complaining is tantamount to somebody that's from Buffalo or Kansas City or someplace like that playing. And here's the problem if you're Pickens, and this is what I want him to hear if he's watching first take, which we know he is. Okay, here's the deal, all right? <laughs> If you get to the playoffs and you're a road team, the likelihood is you go run into Buffalo mm-hmm. or Kansas City. Well, what the hell do you think the weather's going to be like there? Yeah. So I don't want to hear that from him because no matter how true it may have been in terms of the inclement weather, you're going to have to deal with it a hell of a lot better than we saw you deal with it last night. That is the point of really, really pushing back on his state. Well, first off, everybody got to play in the same weather. That's right. So the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing in inclement weather and also the Cleveland Browns. The point is the Cleveland Browns out-executed the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it doesn't matter if it's 70 degrees and sunny or if it's a wintry mix, as everyone was calling it last night, which I don't even know what the hell that is. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. If it's a wintry mix, it's it doesn't so matter. Formal. Yeah, you got to go yeah. out and you have Weatherman. to perform. That's right. I get what George Pickens is saying. George Pickens is saying, like, I've watched the Cleveland Browns. And if you get us on, on some good footing and you get us in some good weather, you can't play with us. This is a team that's only won three games. But it's an excuse. Yes. It's an excuse to not say, hey, they outplayed us. It's an excuse to not say, hey, we won a big game against the Baltimore Ravens and we came here and we were unprepared to beat the Cleveland Browns on Thursday night in Cleveland. And the reason that it's a problem is because it shows that the Pittsburgh Steelers can lose to anyone on any given night that their floor is as low as it has to be to lose to bad teams. And when this projects into playing the Buffaloes and the Kansas Cities and the Los Angeles Chargers, I don't care what the weather is, if you execute like this, you'll be home one and done again. And that's the issue. I would say that... I look. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cam. I look at a situation like George Pickens and I say to myself, he's a crash out. We love him. He's the dog on the team. Is he fake tough? No, he's a dog, official dog. Now, when I look at the health of a healthy team, there are certain things that you need. You need guys like George Pickens. They're the quote-unquote very talented, rebellious guys that gives you that grit, that toughness. So the thing about that is you can't have too many George Pickens on your team because it's going to make it undisciplined. Ryan Clark, you know this. You need just a great mixture of crash outs or rebellious guys as choir boys, as good guys, hard-nosed workers. It's a combination of what makes great teams great teams. I saw the uh, the Newsom uh, play at the end of the game, and he did an unbelievable job with shielding him off. But at the end of the day, that's how you play Hail Mary defense, Chicago Mm -hmm. Bears. You just have to shield them off. Now, there is an extra attitude that comes with highly talented players. And you can't just expect the excitement from the one-handed catches that George Pickens gives you because Mike Tomlin knows this. He's had his fair share of very talented guys that comes with extra baggage. So you can't say, do you have an issue with this 
when he is who he is. So you have to take this with a guy like this. Well, I would say, first of all, if the inclement weather was to blame for the loss yesterday, what's the excuse for the fact that before even yesterday, the Steelers were 1-4-1 and one in Cleveland? So they're not winning there. Mm -hmm. um, this was clearly a trap game. I'm a little disappointed in George Pickens just because go dogs, Bulldog, love George Pickens. But last year, the topic of his immaturity came up quite a bit. Mike Tomlin addressed yeah. him needing to grow and mature and develop in that way. And he had seemingly made so many strides this year to do exactly that. And at the first sign of adversity, you lose a game after this five-game winning streak. And now all of a sudden, you're saying the other team's not good. You're blaming it on the weather. So I'm a little disappointed in that because it feels like if you've really made some of those steps to show you've mm -hmm. grown in that space, that as soon as something tough happens to your team, as soon as you leave, lose to a seemingly bad team, um, you tend to sort of throw everybody under the bus. So I'm disappointed in that. But in terms of, like, do they have a George Pickens problem? Absolutely not. I think they have everything else problem except for George Pickett. Yeah, but other two of those, like, growth isn't perfection. Sure. Right? Yeah. You know, like, like that's the it's other not thing. Linear yeah, either. yeah, yeah. He's not going to be this dude that's consistently on the ascension to understanding who he needs to be holistically. I think that's the big thing. But the other thing about George Pickens is his relationship to Mike Tomlin. There's a reason that the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted George Pickens in the second round, even though he's a top 10 first round talent and no one else did. The greatest coaching, I guess, move or the greatest coaching thing that Mike Tomlin's ever done was keeping everything Antonio Brown was away from mm. the media, mm -hmm. allowing Antonio Brown to actually flourish and become one of this game's greatest <clears throat> players, knowing who Antonio Brown was and some of the things that went on behind the scenes that none of you ever knew about. True. And the reason he's sort of taking George, taking George Pickens under his arm is because he believes that he can grow him into not only a mature mm -hmm. human, but a great football player. Mm -hmm. And I'm not comparing these right. two dudes because they are not alike. But George Pickens is the sort of personality that you do need on your team. Mm -hmm. You just have to understand how to cultivate it and allow it Everybody's to not going to be perfect. Everybody yeah. can't have the same personality. And uh, one of the things that's a testament to Mike Tomlin bringing up Antonio Brown is we didn't just not know about Antonio Brown when he was on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Even when, we de when he departed from the Pittsburgh Steelers, we still didn't hear anything from the Steelers yep. about him. So there's a code of ethics that they yeah. follow and what have you and props to them. All, one other thing before I go to Cam. This is, this is the bad point we have to bring up about Mike Tomlin. Winning record, you know what I'm saying, non, a non-losing non, uh, non -losing season in 17 consecutive years, that's a plus. Here's where he does have a losing record. Two and nine on Thursday night road games yeah. in his career. And been there. Oh and six yeah, and we're against get into AFC that now. North rivals. Never beat an AFC North rival on a Thursday night game. Josh Cribbs went crazy on us on a wintry mixed night as well, <laughs> right? It was freaking cold. And it was miserable, yeah. and they ran wildcat the entire game, and we had no answer. And it wasn't like we didn't work on it. It wasn't like we hadn't played against it before. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, but we have had difficulties, and now they continue. Your shoes do fly things. to be a meteorologist. Right. You can stop right. saying wintry mix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the nor'easter. I, 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 I need to say this real quick because I was thoroughly pleased of how Russell Wilson played last night. I think there is a there is a bigger issue that's not being discussed at this particular topic. Why are they not scoring when they need to score? I heard an article here recently uh, by Bruce Arians, and he mentioned football really comes down to these simple things. Can the offense stay on the field? Can the defense get the offense off the field? Can the offense score in two minutes in situational football situations? Can the defense stop them from scoring? Can the offense protect the ball? Can the defense take the ball away? These are certain things that I look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and they haven't been able to score. Their red zone efficiency is poor. Yes, Russell Wilson uh, plays very efficient. Those guys, you know, took turns making plays. But when it comes down to scoring points, when you got a guy like Najee Harris, when you got a guy like George Pickens, when you got a guy like Russell Wilson and even Justin Fields, it's not culminating into scoring as you would have thought this team to have done yeah. uh, on paper. Russell Russell doesn't play well on time. You have to play well on time and work in between the numbers in the red zone. So I think Justin Fields will become a bigger part of the red zone package. All right, let's dive into this more. An uncharacteristic of your former coach, Mike Tomlin, made a series of costly decisions yesterday that hurt the Steelers in their loss. First, after the two-minute warning, the Steelers stopped the Browns on third and two. Instead of forcing a go-ahead field goal attempt or a fourth down decision, Tomlin accepted a penalty, allowing Cleveland to run more time off the clock. Now, second, after an illegal touching penalty on the Browns, Tomlin used his second timeout with 155 left instead of saving it for the game-winning drive. 
And lastly, with 143 remaining, the Steelers stopped Nick Chubb at the two-yard line but chose not to let him score. Allowing the touchdown would have left more time for a comeback, but instead they got the ball back with just 57 seconds remaining. RC, I'm not accustomed to asking this question, but yeah. is Tomlin to blame? No, I don't, no, I don't think Coach Tomlin is to blame for this loss. I think the fourth to two was a difficult decision because you look at the Cleveland Browns, they had already left their offense on the field. I believe that they were going to go for it either way yes. on fourth and two. And what Coach Tomlin was thinking is if they get the fourth and two, then now you get the ball back. Obviously, you ice the game. But now if you complete that, giving them a shorter down and distance from a decision-making standpoint, you were put behind the eight ball. So I don't necessarily know if that was a bad call. Now, when you look at the not allowing them to score a touchdown, yeah. I believe that they should have. I believe that you were at a point in the game where you understood if you let them score a touchdown on that, on that particular play, you get the ball back, and now you have an opportunity to have more time. Yeah. Or if, they, if you stop them and you continue to stop them, they just kick a field goal and win anyway because they were so close to the goal. That was the one questionable call to me. But to me, the fourth and two was the right call to push them back and hopefully stop them on third and seven forcing up fourth to seven field goals. Yeah, there was one uh, situation there that I actually thought was was pretty egregious that wasn't there, and I think it probably rests more on Arthur Smith than it does on Mike Tomlin. But with four minutes left in the game and the Steelers in a third and long, you take out Russell Wilson, who was 18 for 22 at that point, and you put Justin Fields in and you make his first pass of the game a deep yeah. ball to George Pickett. That made absolutely no sense to me because you pick up that first down, you're able That's to run some time yeah. off the clock. And, again, if I'm putting the blame anywhere – there's a few things, and I think we'll get to it, but I would put it on Arthur Smith as well. Why the hell did y'all trade for Mike Williams? What's happening? Yeah. Right, like, what, like, where is he? Well, I think, the, I think the thing is Mike Williams has a particular skill set. Last night in that game, I don't necessarily know if that skill set was going to be utilized in a way that it reached its potential. Also, too, ingratiating someone into the offense, you sort of move along in these certain paces, right? He has a skill set that you want to use. It wasn't something that would be great last night with the weather conditions. Yeah. Maybe their plan was to when implement you... him more after the bye. But a target. Cam, Cam, wait, Cam, why are you smiling? Because I see you cheesing over there. What's got you? Man, RC hit me with the taken. I have a certain particular skill set. Um, but where is he? I mean, when you when you look at the whole skill set on the Pittsburgh Steelers and why you acquire a certain talent. L is right. Like, why draft or why go after a guy like this and we haven't seen him produce anything? So there's a lot of blame, but I always look at situations like this in a way. Hindsight's 2020. If mm -hmm. we would have did this and never did that, I mean, that sports is full of those type of scenarios where you go back and you look. Well, if they had not have done, you don't think of those things when you're in the actual moment. So. Yes, as a fan, you can go back as a critic. Yeah, you could go back as an analyst. You could go back and say certain things. But I guarantee you, Mike Tomlin, I guarantee you, Arthur Smith, I guarantee you every single player on that football field was not thinking about certain things. But they should be mindful just for the whole understanding of situational football and how we can savor timeouts, how we should uh, uh, attack this particular um, situation in the game. And I think the best that was at it or, or was, you know, Bill Belichick. So. Well, here's what I would ask everybody. Excuse me for asking this question. I just think it's necessary. I just think it's necessary. Uh, uh, what's y'all definition of faith? Because we're asking the question, do we have faith in the Pittsburgh? Thing? Faith, what, do what? faith what is exactly believing does it mean? in things that are unseen. Okay, believing. I appreciate yeah, that. You, you walk would know. by faith, you not would know. by you sight. You walk by faith, not by sight. I got that. Yeah, that's how okay. I live my life. Okay, well, I'm sure you do. Here's the deal. The Pittsburgh Steelers, um, faith doesn't apply. We're going to go by what we see. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how we roll, mm -hmm. okay? And the fact of the matter is this. What we've seen, okay, you've exceeded expectations because nobody expected the Steelers to be in this position, the top of the AFC North, as this season began. We looked at Cincinnati, we looked at Baltimore, and we put them a, 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 a tad bit ahead of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Since they're in this position, props is, is deserved where it's due. They've earned that. But do I think they're going to be Buffalo in the playoff game? No. Do I think they're going to be Kansas City in the playoff game? No. So when I look at it from that standpoint and the likelihood that that's one of the teams that, 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 that that's one of the teams they're going to run into first. I mean, when the word faith comes in, what are we talking about? Get to the postseason? Yes, I have faith they're going to get to the postseason. Okay. But what they're going to do in the postseason, in my opinion, based on what we're seeing, is go home. Do you have faith that they could beat the Ravens in the postseason if they face them? 
Yes, mm. absolutely. Not well, listen, Bills listen. or Chiefs, you but can't, Ravens. You can't Who dismiss they anything Texans, with the AFC Jags, North. I'll give you yeah. that. Texans, Jags, and Browns, those are their three losses? Yeah. So um, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay, right? here that's we go. Faith. Take us to Ooh, church. Right? Preach. That, okay, that, sermon. That, that, that's what faith is. <laughs> that's right? what I was asking. And so when we're thinking about the substance, We've seen the substance from this team. You've seen the substance in the way that they play defense. We saw that against Jaden Daniels. We saw that against Lamar Jackson. And so now the question has to be, how does that apply to Patrick Mahomes, right? How does that apply to Justin Herbert? How does that apply to Josh Allen? Now, offensively, we have to see the substance of, okay, in the red zone, when we had Justin Fields, when we were able to utilize our legs, there's evidence that that works. Sure. So how do we implement that more into our game, Arthur Smith, and make Justin Fields a bigger part of what we do as a red zone package to now supplement the things that Russell Wilson cannot do? And the bigger piece of it is this. Which team do we look at and we say, if this team plays their A football game and the Pittsburgh Steelers play their A football game, who wins? That's my problem. Hmm. If Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens play their, their A football game, I don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers can beat them. But I do know the Pittsburgh Steelers have a say in whether or not Lamar Jackson does that. Sure. The same with Kansas City, the same with Josh Allen, the same with the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert. So the difficult part for this team is how do we improve on the things that are deficiencies that are holding us back from being great? We asked all season, are the Kansas City Chiefs playing things too tight, are they as good as their schedule is or as their record is? I think we got to ask the same question about the Pittsburgh Steelers going forward. So Point when it. I look at, first first off, this is what goes back to what I'm saying. No matter who they play in the postseason, it's going to go back to one person, Russell Wilson. Can Russell Wilson get that job done? We know without a shadow of a doubt the Pittsburgh defense, the Steel Curtain, can compete with anybody. You're going to have opportunities no matter who you play, whether it's Mahomes in Arrowhead, whether it's uh, uh, Josh Allen, whether it's Lamar Jackson, whether it's Justin Herbert. That defense gives you full confidence that they're going to give you an opportunity. It goes back to will Arthur Smith do what's right or uh -huh. do what's needed to Hola. score when needed. Hold up. You touched a nerve. You touched a nerve. Now you just, did I hear you say correctly, no matter what, it's going to come down to Russell Wilson? Because the Cam, the Cam yeah. Newton I've been listening to has been lecturing us for the last month. It's team game. Yep. It ain't just about one player. It's a, it's a, you got to take it to a part of the totality, the collection. And now you sitting up there talking about, oh, it's going to come down to Russell Wilson. Now, is that what you just said on national television? Because you've been chastising yes, us when we bring up one player. Now you just did it. Is that what you just did? Huh? Steve, like you, you have an a, a, a unbelievable way of shifting the goalposts with what you try to, to <laughs> dissect and what you do not. What I'm saying, when you're talking about faith, I'm talking about a situation where I have full faith that the Pittsburgh Steelers can beat anybody in the AFC. Yes, I said it. And it's going to come down to one person and how he performs, and that's Russell Wilson. That sounds consistent with the narrative that I've been talking about that I was chastised by you for. But I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I, I, apparently, I didn't hear you correct. All right. Okay. 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 I'm only, I've been on TV with you last couple months now. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, Steelers. I'm what you said. Okay. Steelers right. still first in the division, but Ravens obviously nipping at their heels. We'll see what happens this weekend. Uh